I'm Ralph Curtis. I'm so glad that you took some time today to spend a few moments with me while I paint an oil painting. I've got an 18 by 24 inch canvas today and I've covered the entire canvas with a very thin layer of liquid white. Today I thought I'd paint a little winter scene so I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. I'm going to start today with the 2 inch brush applying some Plato Blue to both corners and the top edge, work my way in and down. And as I work down, it's going to get lighter and lighter, just little crisscross strokes. I don't want this to be solid, I want there to be some variations in the sky, and it'll make it look more natural. And then when I kind of get done, we'll uh, go across and uh, smooth it out. Down here I'm going to put some water. I'm not sure if it's going to be a river or lake yet. Um, horizontal strokes, because today the water is going to be laying still. It's a real cold winter scene, so it's not moving around much. Do a little on this side. And I'm going to leave a spot right in the middle. I'm thinking it's going to work out good for us a little bit later on. We'll see. Can you see that little bit of a red in the middle, that pinkish color in the middle of the painting? When I put the uh, liquid white on, I put just a pinhead drop of alizarin crimson uh, there, and I'm hoping that's going to work out good for us too. It should. Now I'm taking a one inch brush and dipped it in titanium white and little tiny circle motions. I'm putting the indication of the edges of some clouds. And then when I get those edges down, I'm going to take a, a clean one inch brush as I have here and just not touching the outer edge of the cloud but the bottom of it, mixing it in with the blue that's already on the painting. This uh, softens the clouds up. And then, just barely touching in the directions of the cloud, just kind of fluffing them up. This is what really makes them fluffy and soft. Makes you want to just lay down and go to sleep on them, one of them. Now I'm going to take the palette knife and take just a little layer of black and brown and blue that I've mixed together. And I'm going to drop a mountain in right here. Just a little uh, little mountain in the background. We may put some snow on it here in a minute. I'm just concerned about the outer edge at this time of the mountain. I'm going to take the one inch brush and pull it down now, just like right into the sky. And this gives me also some uh, indication as to the lay of the mountain. So when I start putting snow on it, how to uh, which direction to pull my knife. Now I've got just a little roll of titanium white on the knife. Start it in sort of a vertical position and turn the knife as I come down in the lay of the mountain. You see we turn that see how we turn that knife. Now it's just barely touching the canvas and we do that so the the white will break as it comes down and loses the paint. It breaks more and more and it creates those crevices in the mountain. <clears throat> and you can stand back and look at it and uh, kind of touch it up here and there. Add another little edge. I see one right there. There we go. And let's do something crazy. Yeah, let's make a little, little turn there and come down. Yeah, I like that. Now I'm going to add just a little bit of blue to that uh, snow color, just darken it up a little bit, and put it in these crevices back here where Mr. Sun's not shining on right now this time of the day. Just in those little crevices, and uh, like I mentioned before, those dark areas is what really makes those light areas show up. 
and really shine. And we'll put some back here on the back side. Now I'm taking the two inch brush and mostly using like the top half of the brush just kind of tapping the bottom of the mountain. And what this does is create a mist of fog or dew or whatever it is. And we'll fluff it up just like we did with the clouds in the sky. It makes it really soft. Now I've got the fan brush and let's put in a little bit of land right here. So I'm holding it in a horizontal position, pressing firmly against the canvas. And when I do that, both edges of the fan brush push up, and that gives us a nice little indication of some trees back there. Then I'm going to come back and holding the brush in a vertical position with the same color, just tapping using the top half of the brush and tap in some indication of some uh, trees. Now this is really far away so we don't want to give it too much detail. It's probably, what would you say, two or three miles away or something like that. Then I'm going to put a little indication of some trees back here. Make a couple of twin brothers. Yeah. And then we'll do maybe mom and dad here beside of them. There we go. Now it takes about a total of one hour I'm going to spend painting this entire picture, uh, painting but uh, elapsed time, you're only going to see about 15 minutes of it because uh, I don't want to take up all of your time today. So if you can just spend about 15 minutes with me, you'll see the entire painting done. It was, that took about an hour because when I do demonstrations uh, for the public or at workshops and so forth. I usually uh, spend about one hour doing this. And we took that two inch brush and pulled down a little bit right straight across that land. And we separated the land and the water. Isn't that a nice little touch? And created a, a uh, reflection in the water at the same time. Now I took a little bit of that titanium white exactly like I did the mountain and just run it across the land indicating that there's a little snow on the land. Now I'm taking the fan brush with titanium white, barely tapping those evergreen trees back there, just a little indication of some snow. Not much because, see, they're far, far away. Now I'm going to take a little liquid white that's on my palette and come across right in front of that land and Put in a little water. Yeah, that shows uh, the water back there like uh, waves hitting the land or maybe hitting a rock or two. It's just a lot of fun. Now with the fan brush and the same color that we made the land back there in front of the mountain, we're going to do the same thing over here on this side. Although right now in the painting it's only eight minutes as far as you're concerned, but we've actually been working on this about 20, a little over 20 minutes now. I'm going to indicate just some background of some trees back there. Grab some titanium white on a one inch brush and put an indication of a, some snow. There we go. And just like we did back there on that other land. We're going to grab just the bottom of that land, pull straight down. I always come straight down when you're making a reflection in the water. Always straight down. There we go. There we go. Now I'm going to grab a clean two-inch brush straight across. That's right. Not too much, just straight across. There we go. Now I'm going to grab some blue and white 
on the knife and separate that uh, land and water again just kind of putting some indication in there of some rocks water and uh, we're doing the same thing in the lower right hand column part of the painting what do you think about the little uh, gap that we left in the water at the beginning you think that's working out pretty good for us I think it is here we're going to put another tree here we don't want those others to be too lonely, so we're going to put a big old brother here. And we'll put one on this side, yeah. Now I'm using a fan brush with a little bit of Van Dyke Brown on this one here. It's a neat way to make a tree. Start off real thin at the top and just apply a little more pressure. That brush spreads out as it comes down when you apply a little more pressure. Gives the gives us that tree trunk that's a little wider. There we go. And we can make some uh, couple of limbs with that fan brush while we're at it. Now I've got the little tiny liner brush now. And we can make some real little tiny limbs at the top of this tree. I'm sorry that my uh, arm is in the way there. In the future, when my rich uncle dies, I'll maybe have another camera. We can put it on the other side. And we'll put a little titanium white on the uh, knife. Barely touch just one side of the tree. And this will give us the effect of either snow or a birch tree. You know, either way. In the summertime, I usually do a, you would do a black tree. We would make it pretty black, and then we'd put that white on there, and it really makes a beautiful birch tree, a beautiful way to do it. We'll put a little tiny baby evergreen down here on the very edge. He likes to be down there next to the water. Sometimes uh, you want to go ahead and uh, indicate in the water itself whatever is above it so that you'll have a, a reflection like I'm doing here. And we'll take a good dry brush and we'll do just exactly like we did that water. We want to we want to kind of make it fade into the water so yeah pull straight down and straight across never at an angle water always is level unless it's falling off of a waterfall or something like that now back here in the very back uh, was kind of open. I feel like there should be a separation of land and water there. So I took the knife, and you see that uh, see that Plato blue I put back there to kind of give it a little shoreline. And that's going to about wrap it up today. I hope you enjoyed painting this little winter scene with me. Remember, you can do it too. All it takes is a little time and patience. So until next time, God bless. God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made.